CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery and Axenfeld Riger syndrome with anterior segment dysgenesis. What are going to be the challenges here? Let me show you this case. Now, this is me operating. I'll make a pair of knees, but look carefully at the eye here, and you'll notice it's very odd, right? The cornea is not very round, it's kind of rhomboid shaped. You can see that temporal aspect will make our incision. That is the kind of furthest from the visual axis. Putting in some anesthetic here to see if I get more dilation. Now, this patient has an asymmetric dilation. So you notice that nasally, the patient's dilated normally, superior inferior, but temporally not as much. Now putting in our viscoelastic, and we're just trying to see, is there lens stability? This patient could have abnormalities of zonular support. So again, injecting viscoelastic nice and slowly here. Let me show you this video in real time. So I put that viscoelastic in, I'm just examining, and now you can see, look how diamond-shaped or rhomboid-shaped that cornea is. We're going to make our fake incision here, temporal, barely nicking those limbal vessels, using a diamond, getting a good tunnel length here, about a single plane incision, 2.2 to 2.4 millimeters wide. The keratome itself is 2.0, and you can see a little bit of limbal vessel bleeding there, which is great. And now starting the rex, now important to get the rexus lined up in the patient's visual axis. We're lining up the rexus with the lens itself, with the crystalline lens, not with the dilation, which is asymmetric. So I'm measuring again. And you know my forceps are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters from the tip. So here, as I come temporally, I'm going to need to make this rexus right up against the iris. Again, I want this centered. See where the right light reflex are, the Purkinje image there? I want that uh, IOL centered up in that Purkinje image. And that's also where the patient's visual axis is very close there. And so I want to get this rexus basically around that central Purkinje image. I don't want to use the pupil as a guide because it's such an asymmetric pupil, asymmetric dilation. Now, could you put in hooks or other things? You could, but I don't think you need to. Let me tell you about Retin Rounds, our sister channel. It's an amazing channel with such great learning for cataract surgeons like you and me too. Please check it out and subscribe on YouTube as well as RetinRounds.com. Now, I'm going to do a very gentle hydro dissection here, very slow. I want that nucleus out of the bag. I'm not sure what we have in terms of zonular integrity. The rexus looked okay. The nucleus wasn't shaking. There was no phacodinesis. So a little more viscoelastic to protect the cornea and epithelium. Patient also has an irregular degree of astigmatism. There's some regularity. Luckily, in the central three or four millimeters, it looks pretty regular. And we're going to address that with a toric eye. Well, which will partially address it. The patient also wants to remain myopic. Now, I'm going to buzz in here, get that nucleus. I'm going to chop it. So I'm going to buzz into the nucleus. We've chopped it. Now remove the cataract pretty easily. So in axenfeld riger syndrome, this was described more than 100 years ago. First, Axenfeld described posterior embryo toxin, right? Anterior displacement of Schwalbe's line, which you can kind of see in some parts here. Then a few years later, uh, Riger described other things of anterior segment dysgenesis, such as like we see here, irregular iris atrophy, core ectopia, different dilation, we can see the cornea is not perfectly round here or even oval shaped. It's kind of rhomboid shaped. So all these things were associated together and then it became axenfeld riger syndrome. Again, described about 100 years ago. Now, uh, these patients, they got a pretty high chance, like 50% chance of having glaucoma. So while we're, we're not aware that this patient has glaucoma, we're going to refer the patient to a glaucoma specialist just for monitoring. Again, odds of 50% are pretty high. So now taking out the nucleus, everything goes as planned. Now, this patient started off very myopic with about two diopters of corneal astigmatism. And from old, old records, the patient was able to be corrected about 20-25 vision with spectacles, which tells me that at least centrally, the degree of irregularity for the astigmatism in the cornea is not too bad because obviously spectacles could correct it. So there we go. Now we're trying to get the IA probe set up and we'll take out the cortex. And this is where you got to be very careful. When removing the cortex, you want to make sure that you don't have any movement of the capsule rexus. So we'll go nice and slow here. And I'm showing you this video from start to finish. So you can see the whole thing. And now aspirating that cortex out, it comes up pretty easily. And again, the rexus is not moving. So that means to me, pretty good zonular support here. So I'm not indi I don't see any indications of weakness in the zonular support at all. So at this point, I'm thinking, you know what? I don't need the capsule retention ring. I prepared these things ahead of time. But I don't think we're going to need them. So slowly cleaning up the cortex here, being very cautious, a little bit adherent there to posterior capsule. We definitely want to get that. And now let's see, maybe there's another. Oh, we're going to check with the chopper. Look at that. Move, lifting the chopper, uh, using the chopper to lift the iris up. You can see sub-incisionally where it doesn't dilate. There was a big piece of lens material, there, a bit, big piece of cortex. So aspirate that out. That's important to check. And now cleaning up the posterior capsule, a little bit of polish there, that little adherent lens material. 
And then we'll finish up this case here. So again, this patient started off very myopic and wanted to remain myopic as well. But this patient, normally for near vision, I recommend something around a minus two range. It now gave good vision, as you know, at about half a meter or 50 centimeters. This patient wanted it closer. So this patient, we aim for minus 3.5. Again, that's the patient's prerogative. That's what the patient preferred. We doubled, triple confirmed with the patient. And then we ended up doing the surgery and the patient was thrilled with the outcome. Now, what happened to my capsule polisher? Someone was messing with it. Look at that. Mm, that happens sometimes, right? Well, it'll still work. We'll get that straightened out and fixed at the end of the case. But look, we'll polish up that capsule. Look at that. Clean and looks beautiful. And again, the look at the rex is centered up where we want to on the patient's actual true anatomy. Don't use the dilation as your guide. And so now, let's see what we got here. Are we going to probably fixing the polish that we're doing here? But I want to show you the video unedited, start to finish. So we're going to show you that too. And now, yeah, I think I'm fixing that polisher. <laughs> I want, I'm a stickler. I like my instruments to be perfect. Here comes the lens. Here we go. Single piece monofocal acrylic lens. We're going to get that nicely delivered slowly, slowly, slowly into the capsule bag. There it is. The cornea, if you look carefully, already has marks. It's somewhere around 90-ish degrees. And that's where we're going to line it up. We're going to line up the toric marks of the IOL with the marks that have been previously placed on the cornea. Obviously, many different ways of lining up a torque lens. Look at that, beautifully positioned, good overlap 360 by the capsular axis. Let's remove our viscoelastic. So very, very lucky here. We're very fortunate this patient does not have glaucoma. Again, half the patients with axial rigor do have glaucoma. We're very fortunate this patient actually had good zonger support and the cataract surgery went very beautifully and uneventful. That's the nice part. So you can see that, you can tell the marks on the cornea. We're going to rotate that lens just a little bit more and get that lined up. And once that's in good position, we'll finish up the case here. And again, this is a rare condition. It's about less than one in 100,000 patients. So in the second half of my career, I may not see another one of these. But if you ever see one, now you'll Google search axenfeld riger syndrome and cataract surgery and it'll lead you to the world's best and largest library of cataract surgery and anterior segment videos. And that's cataractcoach.com. And be sure to check out our sister channel, redandrounds.com. Thank you so much.